something I definitely want to do with my 6502 based breadboard computer is to get basic running on it, since that opens up a lot more possibilities and lets you program on it without having to write assembly code. Fortunately, there's a GitHub repository with Microsoft Basic for the 6502, and it says it can generate nine different versions of Microsoft Basic for a different 6502 based computers. Unfortunately, none of those are the computer I built. So to get it to work on my computer, we've got a little bit of work to do. And that's because the basic software doesn't necessarily know how to interact with the particular hardware in my computer. If we look at how it works for some of the other computers it supports, like, um, you know, here's the Commodore 64, you can see it defines a bunch of addresses for different things, uh, particularly these monitor functions. It's got these different addresses here for things like character in, character out, load, save, and other things. And all of these are functions in ROM at these particular addresses. You know, we could also look at uh, basic for the Apple IIe and see some different functions at different addresses. But we've still got monitor read key and monitor C out for user input and output. And generally, you could refer to these functions in ROM as the simplest form of a BIOS or a basic input output system for the computer. But before we get into any of that, we've got some, uh, some prerequisite work to do here. Uh, if we look back at this uh, Microsoft basic uh, repo, it says it uses the CC65 compiler suite uh, in order to build this project. So let's take a look at how that works. So here's the repo for CC65, and it says it is a complete cross-development package for 6502 uh, systems, including a macro assembler, a C compiler, which um, might be interesting to come back and look at, linker, um, and so on. So you can potentially download it for your system here. They've got some downloads. Or I'm just going to clone the repo and uh, just build it locally on my system. So I'll copy that address, and then I'll go here and clone that repo. And so it's going to download everything. And then if we just go into that directory and type make, it'll start building uh, the, the compiler. And so this takes a couple minutes to, uh, to build everything, so I'll go ahead and speed that up for you. But when we're done, we'll find a bunch of stuff in the bin directory that it creates. And for today, we're just interested in CA65, which is the assembler, and LD65, which is the linker. And so I've moved everything in this bin directory into my path, so I can just run these tools from anywhere. So let's see if we can use this assembler to build Wasmon from my previous video. So the assembler is CA65, and it gives us an error, uh, line 187, illegal addressing mode. So let's take a look at that. So here's line 187. It's just decrement. Um, and I think the original 6502 didn't support directly incrementing or decrementing the A register. So this is actually um, one of those new 65C02 uh, features. So we can tell it at the top of the file here that we're using the 65C02 rather than the original 6502 uh, using the set CPU directive. We'll save that and try assembling it again. And it looks like that time maybe it worked. And so that's going to create this file wasmon.o. The .o indicates that this is what's called an object file. Now if we look at it, it's not the final output we want. We can't just write this to our ROM and, and have it work. You know, it's, it is machine code, sort of, uh, but it's not directly executable. So if we look, you know, if it were just machine code, we'd expect it to be around 256 bytes, because that's how, how big Wasmon is. Or, or maybe it would be padded to 32K to fit in our ROM, but, you know, we can see it's about 2400 bytes. And so if we look at what's in the file, you know, it's binary and it, it does contain machine code in here, um, but it also has some other metadata. You know, specifically at the end here, you can see it's got all of these um, different labels that, that were in the source code. And that's because that what's in this file is relocatable machine code, um, meaning that addresses and jump instructions and, and other memory locations are not totally specified yet. So yes, you know, normally uh, Wasmon would be located at address FF00 in, in memory, but in this object file, we have actually haven't made that assumption yet. So it's up to the linker to take this object file and, and perhaps other object files, hence why it's called a linker, uh, and bundle them up into a final output file. And then during that linker process, it's the linker that decides where in memory everything goes. And only after that can it actually hard code those addresses into the final output file. Now previously, you know, if we go back to our, our source file, we have these org directives in here that we were using to hard code the location of our code. So, you know, org 8000 was saying we wanted our ROM to start at address 8000, and then org FF00 meant that the code following that, which is Wasmon here, goes at address FF00. Now, the CA65 assembler doesn't actually require these. And in fact, if we go look in the documentation here, where it talks about .org, it says that you do not need .org in most cases. 
Placing code at specific address is the job of the linker, not the assembler. So there's usually no reason to assemble code to a specific address. So we can go back to our code and remove these org directives, and there's another one hiding down here. Save that and reassemble our code, and it assembles just fine. But now to get our ROM image, we have to use a linker. And so the CC65 is called LD65. And if we just run LD65 wasmon.o, it's going to say memory configuration is missing. And that's because we haven't told it anything about how we want our ROM laid out. And of course, especially after we deleted those .org directives, how, how would it know? So the linker needs a configuration file um, to describe the, the memory address uh, or memory layout of the system. And it's pretty flexible. That's one of the nice things about this. So here's the documentation for the linker. And here's an example of kind of what that configuration might look like. So let's create a config file that has something like this in it. So I'll create a bios.config file for uh, our ROM BIOS that we're creating here. And just like the example here, we want this memory section to describe the address layout of our computer. And so in our particular computer, we've got RAM starting at address uh, 0000. And the size of the RAM is uh, 400 hex, which is 16 uh, kilobytes of RAM. And the type is going to be read-write. Then we've got ROM starting at address 8000. And its size is 8000, which is 32K, which matches the 32K of ROM that we have. And the type is read-only for the ROM. So that describes the high-level memory map of our computer. So now we can try to use this configuration file with the linker. So we'll say dash C bios.config, and then we're going to link wasmon.o. And now it's telling us we're missing memory area assignment for segment code. And that's because, you know, we've told it what memory areas we have, but we haven't told it which memory areas to put our code in. So we can do that by modifying our configuration file to add a segments section. And by default, there's a code segment that includes all of the assembly code that we wrote. And so we can specify here that we want the code segment loaded into ROM, which is read-only. So if we save that and run the linker again, and let's see. Oh, I just need to close squiggly bracket there, run the linker again, we don't get any more errors. And what it did is it created this file a.out. Now if we look at it, it's exactly 256 bytes. So, and it includes all of our code. But really what we're looking for is not just the compiled machine code, which is what we have here, but an image that we can write to our ROM chip. And our ROM is 32K. So we're looking for a 32K file to write to our 32K ROM, you know, even if we're only using 256 bytes of it. So what we can do is in the memory configuration, we can add uh, fill equals yes to the ROM line here. And that will cause it to fill the entire 32K of uh, even if the code that we load into the ROM is less than that. So save that. And we run the linker again. Now, if we look at our a.out file, it's exactly 32K. It's exactly the size of our ROM. Now, if we look at what's in a.out, uh, it starts out with our code here at the beginning, just like before, through address FF down here at the bottom. Then it's all zeros. And then this asterisk indicates that it this previous line repeats all the way up to the end of the file. So it's basically all zeros all the way through the end of the file. And so the problem with this is now Wasmon's going to be at the beginning of ROM, uh, not the end at address 00, or excuse me, at address FF00, which is where, where we want. And I guess it doesn't really matter where Wasmon is as, as long as it, we can, you know, run it somehow. But what definitely matters is where the reset vector is, because these last few, uh, last six bytes here are the reset vectors. And the 6502 CPU is hard coded to look at address FFFC and FFFD to figure out where, where to start executing when, when the CPU first powers up. So these have to be at the end of ROM. But this is where we have a lot of flexibility. So instead of just using this default code segment to put all of our code at the beginning of ROM, we can define our own segments to, to get more control over where they're loaded. So if we go back to the code, um, all the way back at the top here, I can define a segment by saying dot segment wasmon. So now the code that follows this uh, directive is in the wasmon segment. Then I can go to the bottom and define a different segment for the reset vectors. So we'll do uh, dot segment reset vec for the reset vectors. So I save that and assemble it again, and then try to link it again. 
it says there's a missing memory area assignment for segment wasmon. And that makes sense. You know, we created the segment, but we never told it where it would go. So back to the configuration, and we no longer have a code segment as we've actually moved all of our code to our own custom segment. So I don't think we'll need this anymore, but we can change this to uh, wasmon. And so now we're loading the wasmon segment into ROM, uh, read only. And then we also have the reset vector uh, segment. And so we'll also load that into ROM and the type of that of course is also read only. So now if we relink it, let's see, what do we do wrong? Line eight says type, oh, it doesn't go in quotes. So now if we relink it, that'll create another a.out file. And if we look at that a.out file again, uh, nothing really is any different. You know, we're still just loading both of the segments into ROM right at the beginning of ROM. And so they both just kind of go into the beginning of that 32K uh, file. But really we want this reset vector segment to be at the very end of the file um, at, a, at a particular address. But we have the tools to do that. So we go back to our configuration file. We can modify our memory map to add an explicit load point for the reset vectors. So we'll add a new memory location for the reset vectors at address FFFA, which is where they belong. And it's just six bytes and it's read only. And we'll just say fill because it's gonna be part of our file. And we also need to shrink the, the ROM by six bytes so that the uh, overall size of the ROM plus the reset vector still adds up to the actual size of our physical ROM. So this size is gonna be uh, seven FFA which is eight zero 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 minus six, right? And then the reset vector started FFFA. That makes sense, I think. So now we have a separate memory location for the reset vectors that's always gonna wind up at that exact uh, address on the, on the computer. So now we can change where we're loading the reset vector segment to load into reset vec instead of ROM. So now if we rerun the linker and look at what we've got, it is slightly different. So we can see we've got from, you know, the beginning of the file up through FF or 00FF, I guess, we've got Wasmon right where it was before. Um, then we have all zeros and then a star, meaning it's just all zeros for the rest of the file up until 7FF0, the last line of the file here, it's all zeros up until the last six bytes. And so these last six bytes are our reset vectors. Now, Wasmon is still at the beginning of ROM, uh, not at FF00, where it would normally be located. Um, but at this point, it should actually work just fine. You know, because if you look at the reset vector, it's these two bytes here that determine where the computer starts executing when, when it powers up or resets. And they're in little endian format, so you would read this as address 8000, which is the beginning of ROM, and that's where Wasmon is. So when this computer boots, it's gonna start executing at the beginning of ROM, which is where Wasmon's located if we write this file to, to ROM. So let's do that. Let's write a.out to a ROM. Okay, so let's get that chip. We'll put it back into our computer and then go ahead and reset it. Here I'm connected to the serial port and indeed it looks like we're in Wasmon because we've got our little backslash cursor. So if we look at address 8000 through 800F, let's say, which is the beginning of ROM, um, it should match what was at the beginning of our file. We go back and look at our file here. It's uh, D858A9 and so on, D858A9. So that matches what was at the beginning of our file. And if we look at address FFF0 through FFFF, we see the end of ROM, uh, including our, our reset vector here of 0800. So no surprises there. Of course, now, you know, FF00 through FFFF no longer contains Wasmon, it's just all zeros, except for our reset vector down there. And that's maybe okay, you know, but if we didn't like that, we could go back to our linker configuration and create a separate memory block for Wasmon. It'll start at address FF00, since that's where we want it. The size is FA hex, which is uh, 250 bytes. And then it's part of our ROM file, so we still want type read only and, and fill yes. And then we also have to make sure to shrink the rest of our ROM block uh, to 7F00 so that everything, uh, everything else lines up. Then we could just say that we want the Wasmon segment loaded into the Wasmon memory location. And now if we relink the file and look at what we've got, it now starts out all zeros, 
all the way up until 7F00, which in memory is going to get mapped to FF00, and that's where we find Wasmon. The other cool thing is if you look at the reset vector down here, remember this used to be uh, 08 or 8000, now it's FF00. And that's because in the source code, we don't hard code the reset vector. We use this reset label, which back at the top of the file maps to this reset label. And so that address is just going to be filled in with wherever this particular instruction, this first instruction of Wasmon, ends up. And all of that's automatic. Now if we write this to ROM and put that back in our computer and, and reset it, Wasmon starts up just fine as before. But now if we look at address uh, 8000 through uh, 80FF, where Wasmon used to be, it's all zeros. Nothing there anymore at the beginning of ROM. But instead, if we look at address FF00 through uh, FFFF, that's where we find Wasmon. That's where we find our new reset vector of FF00. So now if we want to start adding more functionality to our ROM, we, we can do that. You know, so in the next video, I'm going to talk about how to add Microsoft Basic. Uh, but before we do that, you know, it's going to need us to provide some code for interacting with the user. You know, like I talked about before, um, every computer's got different hardware for interacting with users, so software like BASIC isn't going to know how to deal with that hardware directly. Instead, you know, what that software needs is a couple simple routines for outputting a character or inputting a character. And I've gone over this code in, in previous videos, but here are a couple subroutines for inputting a character uh, and outputting a character. And this is probably the simplest possible example of a BIOS, or basic input-output system. Um, so we can call this segment BIOS. I'll save that. And then in our config file, and then in the linker config file, we can add that segment and load it into ROM. And it's read-only. The other thing we can do is organize our code so that, you know, as this project gets bigger, uh, you know, we're keeping different functionality in different files. So this bios.s file has the bios routines, uh, character in and character out. And they reference these ACIA status, ACIA data, um, these, you know, different registers for the uh, serial UART. Um, so those are defined here as well. And then what I'm going to do is I'll have this bios file be the main file that we assemble. Um, and at the bottom here, I can include wasmon.s. So that way when we assemble this BIOS file, we get our BIOS routines as well as all of Wasmon. And so then if we go over to Wasmon, in here we no longer need to redefine these uh, registers since they're defined in the BIOS.s file. And then the other thing I'll do is I'll move the reset vector segment out of Wasmon because that's not really part of Wasmon. So I'll take that out and then move that over to the BIOS uh, file here. So we've got our BIOS routines in here. We've got our registers defined. We've got our BIOS routines character in, character out. Then we're just including Wasmon. And then we've got our reset vectors. So I'll, so I'll save that. And then if we go over to Wasmon, this now just has the code for Wasmon. There's nothing, nothing extra, nothing uh, machine specific, other than I guess it does implement the uh, input and output itself. But we'll ignore that for the moment. I'll save that, and the so Wasmon is just Wasmon, and the rest of our ROM BIOS, such that it is, is in this file. So now we can just assemble the whole thing with uh, CA65 BIOS.S, and then link it with the linker LD65 with our configuration of BIOS.config, and we're linking BIOS.O, which was the output of the assembler here. And then that produces a.out, which we can take a look at here. And so that has our BIOS routines starting at the beginning of ROM. And so that's what this first little bit is. Then a whole bunch of nothing, a bunch of zeros, all the way until we get to the end of ROM. This will be address FF00 in, uh, in the actual computer's memory. And we've got Wasmon, and then finally our reset vectors here at the end. And so if you're wondering how we're going to use these BIOS routines, we kind of looked at that a little bit at the beginning of this video. But if we go back to the Microsoft Basic source code, and look again at the Commodore 64 definitions. You know, like we saw before, you can see it's hard-coded with addresses for uh, character in and character out. And same thing with the, you know, the Apple IIe configuration, um, except they call it mon 
read key and mon c out, uh, but it's just hard coded with those addresses. And that's because you know software that interfaces directly with the BIOS doesn't necessarily have to understand how to talk to the underlying hardware, but it does need to know you know where that BIOS routine um, is is located in ROM. And so for us to figure that out, we can use the linker actually to generate a symbol table for us. So if we go back to our source code, I can go to the top of our BIOS uh, source here and put an assembler directive here called debug info. And what that'll do is it'll create a symbol table. So then if we reassemble this with the CA65 assembler and relink it with the linker, actually we can tell the linker, it's a dash LN, oops, dash LN, and then a symbol file. So called bios.symbol. That'll have it write the labels to this file. So if we look at what's in that file, you can see all the different symbols and the value for, for each one. So these are all the different labels that, uh, that are in the source code. And a lot of these are you know, part of Wasmon. But if we go down to the bottom here, you can see our character in and character out are here. And it has the address. So 8000 for character in, 8011 is the address for character out. And so those are the addresses where these, uh, these routines are gonna end up in, in our actual ROM. So any software that wanted to use them could just do a jump subroutine to you know, 8011 with a character in the A register and that character would be printed to the user. The software doesn't have to know how that happens. And so the CC65 assembler and linker and this ROM should set us up pretty well uh, to adapt Microsoft Basic to work with our hardware. And that's what I'll do in the next video. And as usual, I wanna thank all the patrons who help make these videos possible. Well, thank you.